And when you think about it, I mean, Laura, when you worked with, with, with me in the star, we would probably have had, in the last couple of years, maybe 30 murders in a year, or homicides, we'll have to call them because of manslaughter. There's probably that many in a week in some American cities or, you know what I mean? It, it does put, I know it's a much bigger place, but you know, 30 murders compared to what I, you know, you know, it, it always put it into perspective for me because I'd, I'd watch American shows and, you know, have all these mass shootings, for example, but just there does seem to be a very high murder rate over there. Totally, there is. I mean, there's not a day goes by that, you know, we've reporters in New York and Philadelphia and San Francisco and like every day they'd be working on a murder, like literally every single day. Um, and, you know, some of it is like mass shootings. Some of it is, you know, kind of gangland or, you know, turf war uh, kind of criminality, organized crime. Um, and others are, you know, sheer accidents, like it's robberies go wrong, uh, you know, people carrying weapons on the subway that they shouldn't have, things like that. So some of it is accidental, but it doesn't, you know, lessen the seriousness of it. Um, Because it's something we've, I suppose, talked about on the team, obviously kind of safety and being away from home is something we're very mindful of. But a lot of it is just so random um, that it's like, if something does happen, it, you know, it, there's probably nothing we could have done to prevent it. It, you know, it's totally random. Uh, and, you know, if something, you know, if you are robbed or anything, it's unfortunately just bad luck. Um, and you now that's the way you have to live. Can I just ask you one just one journalistic question? We always hear this about America being a much more open society. Do you get better access to information in America? I mean, you you would remember the problems we have, and you had, you know, just getting information from God. You know, you you know the job. I don't need to tell you. You know how difficult, how different is it over there? Access to information wise. It is so different. Um, say forces like the NYPD, they all have Twitter accounts. So they have like joint, you know, one for the NYPD and a lot of officers then have their own individual accounts. They tweet every day. They tweet pictures. They tweet CCTV. They tweet, you know, like details that we would struggle to get, like names, ages, dates of birth, things like that. So it's a lot more open. Um, and, you know, it's funny if, you, if they you're looking for something that... Uh, you know, hasn't been out in the public, they say things to you like, oh, like, I, I only have his mugshot. And you're like, you know, only mugshot. I would have never got that at home, you know. So uh, kind of what they think is the bare minimum and what we would have gotten access to at home is totally different. Um, but, you know, like, I, you know, I, I, I do think there's something to be said for it. Uh, you know, kind of transparency and justice is really important. And, you know, I think as well, the, the other thing is, you know, the NYPD and forces here, they do offer money for tips. Um, you can get up to three and a half grand just for a tip. Um, and it's obviously more if the person goes on to be kind of prosecuted or convicted. Um, so that's, you know, I'm sure a factor in it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of way more, liberal is probably the wrong word, but way better access to information here. And do they release charge sheets or rap sheets i think you call them is it no generally once the person is charged um they kind of let the courts take the lead on it um and you wouldn't maybe kind of hear of it uh until the person is then before court but uh you know in terms of you know getting an making an arrest or making a charge it's a lot more um liberal and of course once they are charged uh you know mugshot and that is kind of 